Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, a couple of example cases we have had uh, when it comes to troubleshooting, some real-world issues, and how we identified them and fixed them. To start with setting the stage, uh, we were formerly known as City Network uh, and uh, run, ran, ran the service called City Cloud. Nowadays, we're known as Clura. Um, we're running uh, multi-region public clouds, a number of them, as well as some uh, public clou uh, private clouds and um, a bunch of compliant clouds for users that have uh, specific uh, regulatory needs, like finance, etc. Uh, we have been op running OpenStack since IceHouse. Uh, and nowadays, we're mostly on Siena in most of our environments. Uh, we use OpenStack Ansible for deployment, ML2 OVS for networking, and I work with uh, architecture deployment and maintenance of our OpenStack setups. So how do we get kind of reports? How do we know there are an issue to take a look at? Uh, of course, classic monitoring. We might get an alert. Someone might get woken up in the middle of the night and uh, and uh, has to start troubleshooting due to our own monitoring systems finding something. Uh, also, there are a number of tests, of course. If we, are, for example, are doing changes, we can see that something happens during an upgrade and, and have to act on that. Also, there are logs that can both be monitored and uh, also alerts, uh, et cetera, can be generated from, from those logs. And user reports. We prefer to find uh, things before uh, the users find them, but uh, in some cases, also, we get reports from customers that something is behaving in a strange way or not working at all. So, the first uh, issue. Uh, the initial report here is that a user is trying to access a long Barbican secret from heat. Uh, and that leads to a heat error and an un undeletable stack. And the user is using a heat template, injecting a Barbican secret and uh, writing that to a file, basically. Plain and simple. And the client side error. Uh, that the user gets from heat is a data too long for column status reason. So it looks like something is uh, that heat is trying to shove something into MySQL that um, is too long. Then we start taking a look at the service side logs. And there we can actually see two errors two different uh, errors. The first one there, data too long for column status reason, is kind of the same thing we saw in, uh, in the client side error. Uh, and it points to my, a MySQL problem or a problem that Heat is trying to push something into MySQL that is too large. But we also see another error that is actually uh, from Nova which is uh, a bad request. We're getting a 400 error from, uh, from Nova that uh, something, something uh, is too long for, for the Nova API. Uh, and let's take a, take a look at the limits there. When it comes to the, reso uh, to the status reason, that's a text, uh, MySQL type text, has a limit to 65, 000, uh, 64K. And also documentation says that the provided user data, which we saw in the earlier slide that was, uh, Nova was complaining about being too long, uh, it should not be base64 encoded, because that will be automatically done. And the base64 encoded result has a limit of 64K. OK, so we're probably on to something here. So, what's actually going on here? A request is sent to Heat to spin up the stack. 
heat attempt to create a Nova instance. Um, then Nova fails to create the instance due to user data being too large, more than 64K after the base64 base encoding. So at this point, Nova will return an error to heat, uh, which is pretty much uh, what's seen there. And if you look at the value, that's the full base64 base encoded data, and then the full uh, base64 encoded data again within quotes. So heat, heat in, the, in turn attempts to shove this error that is now more than uh, 130k characters into uh, the status reason uh, into status reason in the database, which, uh, as we saw, saw earlier, has a 64k size limit, which doesn't work obviously. And MySQL complains about that, uh, and stack, uh, the stack ends up in a broken state. So what we actually had there was two separate issues. The user data that was provided by the user is too large, which is an error in itself. But while uh, trying to report that error back, uh, the status reason uh, field in the database is too small to be able to hold the entire error message from Nova. Uh, and heat doesn't truncate uh, that error before inserting it into the database. At this point, we actually found an older bug that uh, had been filed uh, against Heat, where the status reason field was uh, actually increased a bit in size because it was uh, too text, though. But still, it's not too um, it's not uh, large enough for every every um, case. So, the solution in this case is uh, just that the user shave off about 20k of uh, comments from uh, files in, uh, in user data. So it comes below the 64k limit. <laughs> and also we uh, did report a heat bug uh, that uh, the reason uh, field was too small and the uh, status reason field was too small and uh, probably should be increased in size or uh, it should uh, truncate whatever it's trying to push, uh, put there before. So, another one. At this time, we had an initial report uh, after an upgrade from Victoria to Sina. Uh, and we were seeing, uh, this was kind of seen from multiple locations. We were seeing it in our mon monitoring. We got customer reports, and uh, also as this was during an upgrade or right before we ac people actually saw it in uh, in the logs real time. Um, so we were seeing flapping agents, uh, agents going up and down, both uh, uh, neutron agents as well as compute uh, Nova compute services. Um, we saw intermittent API call failures, uh, kind of it, what looked quite random. Sometimes just an API call wouldn't work or would time out or, or uh, give an error. Uh, we also saw, saw uh, Octavia load balancers that went into error state for no apparent reason. And intermittent issues spinning up new instances you could kind of send the, the API call there and uh, try to spin it up, but it would end up in error state instead of, um, of getting spun up as it should. So we start looking at uh, some logs. Uh, and both in Octavia, the Octavia logs, as well as uh, Nova logs, we start seeing it's database connection errors, often lost connections or lock weight timeout exceeded, uh, which kind of didn't make sense at the time, but everything seems to point to MySQL. So we take a look at the MySQL logs, and we see aborted connections, uh, lots of them, to um, 
uh, from different uh, service users. And uh, the, with the with error, gotten error reading communication packets. So it's basically lost the connection to the, um, uh, to the client and, uh, and uh, after a while times out and uh, emits this error. So we kind of focus a lot on the, on, on the database at this time. We're calling in our uh, MySQL hotshots, uh, looking into the database and the health of it, etc. We spend quite a lot uh, of time on analysis there, performance, tuning, etc. And we see quite a lot of long-running long queries uh, that are waiting for locks, uh, as also the previous error message indicated. Um, we also see uh, that those locks are generally held for the kind of default uh, period of 50 seconds, and then uh, the lock is released, and uh, whatever was going on uh, can continue. We also see some connections that actually time out rather than, uh, than uh, wait enough time for the locks. Uh, we try to fail over the database to another node. As this is a Galera cluster, it's, we have three nodes available to see if it's some issue with a specific node. That doesn't help at all. Nothing, nothing changes. We start looking into HA proxy timeouts uh, and uh, try increasing those uh, to see if that helps in any way to, to um, uh, prevent errors. It doesn't. Right around this time, also something that is seen is uh, an error uh, in the logs of non-master nodes. We had kind of been focusing on the master, the, the keep alive the master node uh, at this time, but on the non-master nodes, we see intermittently it just enters a master state, directly receives a VRRP advert from, from the master and sees that it shouldn't be master, and re-enters backup state. So, yeah, it's going from backup state, master state, and then back to backup state. This kind of indicates uh, that we're missing some VRRP packets from the master, that um, the backup nodes doesn't see, see those as it should. And we start thinking uh, there are kind of two hypotheses, that either it's lost on the network on the way, uh, or it's not being sent in time by the uh, master VRRP process. Keep live the process. So, at this time we, see we fire up some TCP dumps. Uh, and this TCP dump is from the master node. So, we kind of know that what we see here is actually what uh, the master keep live the is sending at, and it can't get lost kind of the, over the network or the physical infrastructure. And as you can see there on the timestamps, um, intermittently we see uh, multi-second delays in uh, VRRP packages, uh, packets from, uh, from the master node. It actually doesn't send, send those in time. So, at this time we uh, kind of devise a workaround. We stop keep alive D on the backup nodes and only keep it running on the master node. So the master node will always be master, and it's not, not nobody else is kind of able to be able to try to um, obtain master status. And this is also to test the hypothesis that uh, that this is the problem behind all the other issues. And there we see that yes, uh, when we stop keep alive D on the backup nodes, everything seems to be working fine. Uh, we get rid of the, the ex excessive locks on, um, on, uh, in MySQL, and we get rid of the lost connections. And yeah, everything pretty much works fine. So at this time, we, we focus on uh, Keep Alive D. Uh, first of all, um, 
kind of the issue that occurred, uh, what, what it meant when, it was when the backup node actually got to master state was that suddenly some of the packets from uh, a, a connection that was ongoing went to the backup node instead. And the backup node the, then uh, dropped the IP and you would probably get some uh, resets of connections, etc., cetera, as uh, it flapped. But yeah, keep alive, D. Um, what was interesting here was that the keep alive D configuration had not been changed during the up update. Uh, so nothing there was uh, changed. We also tried, uh, yeah, and keep alive D was, however, upgraded, up upgraded the version of keep alive D. We tried to reproduce the issue in other, uh, in a test environment, and with the same configuration. But that wasn't possible. We, we just couldn't uh, reproduce it. So we tried to figure out what was different there. At this time, uh, when looking at the logs, we also see another issue. Uh, for historical reasons, uh, what we actually see in the logs is that we're seeing collisions, uh, VRRP collisions, uh, ID collisions. but with an incorrect password, which means that that keep live, they should just uh, discard those and, uh, well, not care about them as the password is different uh, uh, for the VRRP. But for historical reasons, we do have a layer two connections between the management networks of two, uh, two of those regions, which this was one of them. Uh, this, this had been going on for a long time, so it wasn't anything new and uh, it had never caused any issues before. Uh, and yeah, the same uh, VRRP virtual router ID was used in both regions, but the password was different, so yeah. Uh, so in this uh, case, we tried to change the VR, VR ID in uh, this environment to, and restart keep live D on the backups to try that, see if that is the issue or not. And this issue doesn't reappear, so so that was actually the issue. Um, in this case, it seems like the keep alive the upgrade uh, actually changed the behavior somewhat. That uh, and uh, that is probably bug in keep alive the that we uh, we intend to report. But uh, in this case, the workaround uh, of actually uh, changing the VRRP router ID was uh, was the easiest way out. So, the cause, the virtual router ID uh, was not unique between installations. And uh, the upgrade of uh, Keep Live ID changed this behavior, and obviously different password was not enough anymore. So the solution is just to ensure that we have unique VR IDs in all uh, environments that are connected through um, L2 or any other way, which kind of we should have uh, had anyway, but uh, as it hadn't caused any issues before, it, it uh, wasn't that way. So some general resources for troubleshooting. We often look at the, law, at the monitoring. I mean, that's kind of the generic, old classic style monitoring, different tests that are run, and we get alerts if, if something is amiss or something unexpected happens. And that's kind of one of the most common ways to, to, uh, to both get the alert that something is wrong, as well as a resource during troubleshooting to be able to see what parts of, uh, of our environments are not working as expected. Also, we extensively use logs, both, both uh, kind of automatically analyze them and see animalities, and as well as using them as a tr tool during the troubleshooting uh, uh, phases. And we kind of most often find, find whatever is uh, wrong there. Also, there is a bunch of metrics that we can use. I mean, uh, Everything from performance to a number of errors in a different environments, etc., can be used to kind of see that something is going on in an environment that 
that is not expected or normal. Other really useful tools for troubleshooting is, uh, of course, the bug databases of the different projects that, that we use. OpenStack projects or operating systems or whatever. And also in a good re resource is, uh, are the mailing lists. Uh, both searching the archives, see if someone has, uh, has seen an issue before, as well as uh, uh, asking on the mailing lists if there is uh, something that hasn't been seen before and you need, need some help uh, or assistance with, with figuring out what's going on. And people are usually very helpful. Uh, also, the IRC channels can be really recommended for different projects. Uh, people there also, also seem to be very, uh, very helpful, and, uh, and you usually can get a lot of help there if, uh, if you're not, even if you're not f sure it's actually a bug or, or so, but to get, get another view on the problem. And, uh, and also a recommendation if this is something you should report or as a bug or if it's kind of intended behavior or, or, or rather probably a configuration error or whatever. Yes, that's about it. And, uh, and uh, I would like to, to be able to take any, any questions from you. And uh, there is a mic there where you can uh, ask the questions if you want. Okay, thank you very much.